Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. My name's Boyd Sandusky. I got a nickname, Mule Man. Everybody knows me by Mule Man. Uh, I was raised here in Marion County, uh, born in 1953. And, uh, my dad and mom were sharecroppers. Uh, they would, uh, they would uh, farm for half of the crop, usually the tobacco and corn and stuff like that, what we call sharecropper here in Kentucky. And uh, uh, grew up, uh, when I was two years old, I was on a mule riding with my dad while he was plying tobacco and corn with the Rastus. Uh, I grew up uh, uh, with mules, had mules in my blood and horses, and uh, we had, uh, I had five brothers and my sister had six. And uh, uh, I'm the only boy out of six boys that uh, Booze with horses. I've got another brother that's had horses, but they don't work them like I do. And uh, I bred uh, bred for mules. I bred for horses. Uh, I've trained. Uh, I've done just about anything in the horse industry you can think of. I bought, sold, and trade. You know, and uh, I've enjoyed it. And it's been a good uh, good part of my life. I've I've raised. I've got bought young mules and break them and sell them. You know. And, I don't know. I would, I would say four or five thousand. You know, I've had a bunch. Yeah. And uh, I was a pretty good sized horse trader back a few years ago. You know, uh, not so much now because my health failed me some. And uh, so I'm I'm in more riding now. You know, I I'm a, I I I quit deer hunting and uh, squirrel hunting, rabbit hunting, and I ride the back roads in Liberty and and Marion County and and different places like that. You know, and I enjoy the scenery. When we ain't got nothing to do, that's what we do. What kind of wagons did you build over the years? All different kinds? I built every kind you can think of. Different types of running gears. Uh, the, the, the cutting part, the mechanism on the cutting part, everybody have a different idea. Some of them were good, some of them were bad. And uh, uh, you would try to, uh, the bad the ones you thought were bad, you'd try to explain to them, you know, you don't want that, but they did. And, uh, and then they would come back and want it redone again, you know. So, you know, people got to live and learn, you know. When you say cutting part, what is that? The, the fifth that's, wheel? The, that's the fifth wheel. Yeah, the yeah. Two, yeah. Okay. I usually use, uh, I have used square pieces, uh, you know, a square piece, uh, 10, 12 inches square, and I usually use 10, 12 inches round, you know, flat together. That makes your best one, you know. Uh, I've even done them different ways, you know. And uh, uh, I've built them with tops on them. I've built them without tops. I've built uh, show wagons, you know. I've... Uh, you name it, I built a, I built a four carts. I built about anything you can think of. Uh, mules and horses, uh, I wouldn't go back and change nothing. Uh, I, everything that I've done, I'm happy with. Uh, whatever the good Lord has for me in the future, I'll be happy with. And uh, I thank the good Lord every day for my friends. I, I couldn't, I couldn't make it without my friends. Yeah. They're, a, they're a big part of your life. You don't, you never know which ones you're gonna need or when you're gonna need them. And uh... we've taken some of the very best photos by J.C. Allen and Sons and put them in three volumes called America's Rural Yesterday. Volume one is field work, which features photos of farmers in the fields plowing, cultivating, planting, and harvesting the crops with draft horses, mules, and vintage tractors. Volume 2 is Barn and Farmyard, which shows farmers working with cattle, horses, poultry, and hogs, as well as putting up hay, silage, corn, and other crops grown for feed. Volume 3 is At Home and in Town, where farmers and their families relax in the parlor, eat together in the dining room, and prepare meals in the kitchen. It also shows what it was like in small-town America in the 1930s and 40s. To order a copy of these books, just call toll-free 1-877-647-2452. One copy is $24.95, or order any two for $44.95, or all three for just $54.95. Shipping on the first book is $7. 
and $3 for each additional book. Please call toll-free 1-877-647-2452 or order online at www.mishka.com. What we're going to do here today is uh, I've, I've took these and set them up here and I, I drilled, uh, I laid this up. First off, what I'm going to do before I do I'm going to, I, I've cut these off of a piece of rod. This is high tensile metal. It won't, it won't bend. No matter how much weight I put in it, it won't bend. It would probably break before it would bend. It's, uh, it's real tough. You have to use a chop saw to cut it. You can't cut it with a, a, a band saw. Is that and, salvaged metal? Yes, that's salvaged metal. From? Uh, from one of my uh, nephews that uh, works at some factory. He had some of them and he gave them to me. They was on a rod about that long. And uh, this end was bent. They had to, you can't heat this and bend it. They take them and put it in a press, some type of press, jig or something and bend it. And uh, I'll weld this on here like this right here so that I can hook my chain on here. I'll have something to hook to. Usually, I put one on the back on this one here. I'm not going to because I'm going to keep this sled that I built. And uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is flip them over and do that. And then I've got these. These are heavy. I've got these here that I put up here and I pre-drilled a hole so it wouldn't take forever. I pre-drilled a hole and stick these bolts in there. Stick these bolts. I put the bolts in there. And then... Uh, I'll put a nut on there and tighten that down, and that lines my sled up. I don't have to do all the measuring and stuff while we're filming. And then I'll uh, I'll start welding right here, and uh, I'll do the back the same way, and then I'll flip it over and weld across here and here, and then I'll come in here and and uh, drill a scoot this up here and drill a hole. Put me a two by four here that I've got already cut, pre cut here, and I will put a clamp C clamp on it. I'll drill through the bottom, and then I'll stick me a bolt through there. And then I've got my decking lumber that I'll just put screws on top of here. My sled's done. You know, if anybody wants to build a sled, if I know you're probably not going to have this type of metal, but you could go to any machine shop. They would bend it like this for you. Bend it any way you want. It's simple, it's easy, and it's quick. You know, I can come out here, build a sled today, break my mew, go home, watch Western tonight. Same thing back here. Put your boat in. Pull your side back. Back this way. Just pull the whole thing back. Come on back. Come on back. Right, butt right there. Now, there's a nut there. Just put that nut on there and turn tighten it up with your hands. Not here for 
question somewhere. Huh? No, you just hit on my there. Get that nut right there. Put on that one. Watch that thing. It's hot over. It won't take you long to look at it. <laughs> Now we only have one bolt in there, so you wanna you wanna do like you're building, squaring a house off. You don't want your sled running on that piece of metal right there. You don't want your sled running off, so all right, get on that one. sideways. Okay, go back to the other one now. There's your corner to corner, and get them. There we go. That's good. That way your sled sled won't be twisted. It's a it's a very simple thing there to do. It doesn't take long to do it. If you're gonna build your house, you want to square it off, and measure from corner to corner. This this the same theory here. The very same thing. Now what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna weld these up. Just hold down on that one right there. Yeah, like that. Uh, watch your eyes. Attack yours. Get your eyes. Okay, let's do this in back here. Alright, hold down on Got all four corners tacked. We're gonna weld it in. When you're welding this thick metal, I'm using a one eighth rod. You want to keep plenty of temperature so it'll hold. If you don't, uh, if your temperature is not uh, high enough. When you go to hook your horses to it, it's like will come apart and you'll be sitting back here and the sled will be going on. So when you weld uh, over the years, you'll learn that temperature means a lot in welding. If you don't have the right temperature, you're not gonna do a good job. You're not gonna connect the two pieces of metal together. So make sure your temperature is good. Okay, Donald, we're ready to flip it. <clears throat> I may have to move some of this stuff off. Yeah. Okay, you come right over here. Get a hook this side right here. Watch it. You got your gloves? Put your gloves on because you might hit it. be hot. And we're going to go up. Put this side over on that side. Okay, I got this side. Now just slide your side over. Heavy, isn't it?
flipper again. Go my way. Okay, come over here. That thing is heavy. Yeah, you won't need to go to the gym today. Yeah. <laughs> I probably wouldn't be able to go to the gym by the time I get it done. I'm going to guess that boy is 200 pounds. Probably. That's all steel. My wife says you don't get rid of nothing. Uh, here we are. The trick is just being able to find it again. Exactly, when you well, need it. Put it yeah. All right. Put it right even up to the front. You even on the end? Yeah. It's... Well, that's good because the measuring tape was right. <laughs> they don't. They don't change. Uh, <laughs> you take your clamp and clamp it. Should be in a little sack. Don't we can use them too? So you're using carriage bolts so they go more slow? Yes, I use carriage bolts. Uh, now these nuts here, they've got the, they've got the washer built on them there. Uh, that way you don't have to have a, a lock washer on the bottom. You use carriage bolts for wood. Drive it down in there like that. And you know what? I ain't got a I ain't got a socket that'll fit that. Okay. And when you tighten this nut right here up with those lock washers built on them, uh, it'll stay on there. You don't have to worry about it coming off. Okay, now what we're going to do is about this decking lumber. It's treated. You put your bow up if it's a bow in it. Yeah, put your bow up. I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's make this... Uh, make the front even let it hang over the back if it, it's gonna hang just a just a tad probably make sure it's there I said here's good okay now this right here is one of the best tools they ever invented I don't know who invented him but I'd like to meet him and thank him uh, for our impact driver when you get older it makes life so much easier everything changes over time uh, used to, we would have used an eight nail or a six penny nail to nail something like this on. Uh, nowadays, they've got wood screws, which are, man, they're excellent. Uh, about anything I do anymore is with screws. So what I'll do is I'll just simply put a couple screws in here. Get it going the right way. Is that even back there? Yeah. Get a couple more bowls. I'll tell you what, let's lay them all up there. Oh, well. I'm going to simply put a screw in each one of them and hold them. Battery's gone down. Just put that on charge. <laughs> Donald and I, we worked together. We we put up about, uh, oh, we cut probably a little over 100 acres of hay last week and put most of it up, and him and my nephew finished it up uh, yesterday and the day before. And uh, 
we work together, we have a good time, and we get a lot of laughs, we get along good, and uh, that makes working a lot more enjoyable, just like putting this together. You know, it's just like hooking a team of horses or mules together. You got two that works together, it makes a big difference. Uh, I've got a, I've got a single tree here now. I'll put this metal single tree on here and I'll leave it. I've got a clevis on it. If I want to take it off, I can take the clevis off. Reach bigger than that. Not hardly big <laughs> enough, Donald. These things really work good. I use these for everything. Okay, then you got that one over tight? Yeah, okay. Too. Okay, now we gotta get this one in the center. You gonna count the lengths? You want me to count? Left 25 right there. Let's see. All right, here, do it right here. This is actually too long, but I'll uh, I will put a. You got a nut? I'll put this on here and. Uh, and uh, what I'll do is I'll get one that fits and I'll put a I'll put a regular bolt on there with a wrench head hex head on it and I'll put a lock nut on it so it won't back off. And I'll just use this in here to demonstrate with. And there you are. And you want to lock that I mean it'll find center when the mule pulls, but you want to lock it in center so it doesn't get right. sloppy. So, so it, 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 here's what happens. Let me take this back off and yeah. show you what happens. Yeah. Uh, for those that are not familiar, uh, pull it both out. Hold it. Now, let me have you up here. Okay, now we're we're pulling straight. Let's say we're even right there now. Right. If I don't have that bolt in there to lock it off center, when your horse or mule goes to turn right, here's what happens. Your horse or mule is going this way and your sled's going that way. Right. And next thing you know, this here will be up on his up on his heels right back here and he goes to kicking. And uh, that's not breaking a mule or horse in the right direction. Uh, you don't uh, you don't teach them bad habits. Uh, you teach them good habits. If it takes you longer, you teach them good habits. Sled finished. There you go. Beauty. And and uh, also whenever I get me a seed or something, I'll come back in here with a two before. Uh, front and back of the seat. Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.